In this video, we will be extending a three node Proxmox VE cluster with our LinStore Proxmox plugin. This walkthrough references steps outlined in our LinStore user's guide, as well as our blog. Links to both will be included in the description below. Adding shared storage to Proxmox is often done in the form of adding a SAN or some sort of network attached storage. It's usually one of the initial steps taken after configuring a new cluster, and it's an important step because shared storage enables both live migration and high availability management of VMs and containers. LinStore effectively turns your Proxmox cluster into its own shared nothing SAN. Virtual machines and containers have their corresponding disk images replicated in real time throughout the cluster to other nodes. If a Proxmox node crashes, there's at least one more replica of data for each virtual disk image. By design, there is no central point of failure when multiple replicas of data are always on standby. To get everything up and running, first, we need to install the LinStore components alongside Proxmox. Then, the LinStore Proxmox plugin is configured to present LinStore as a storage option inside Proxmox. Once our storage is configured, we'll demo live migration and failover now made possible by LinStore. Taking a look at our current cluster, you can see that we have three nodes, Proxmox-0, Proxmox-1, and Proxmox-2, all residing on the 192.168.223 subnet. On the left side, you can see that we do not have any containers or VMs running, and we only have the default local storage configured for each node in the cluster. Taking a deeper look at the networking in each node, we have ETH0 reserved as a management interface. ETH1 is reserved for LinStore and the replication traffic. And VMBridge0 is reserved for Proxmox, cluster communication, and VM and container networking traffic. We will be referencing the LinStore user's guide throughout this video, so check out the description for links. To get started, we need to configure the Limbit public repositories for Proxmox. This repository includes all software packages necessary to deploy a LinStore cluster and interface with Proxmox. Here, we're copying and pasting some commands from the user's guide to fetch and import Limbit's public signing key to each node's keyring, followed by configuring the Limbit public repository on each Proxmox node. Once this is done, a quick apt update is needed before we can install the required software packages. Next, we need to check which kernel we're currently running. And with that information, we can install the correct kernel headers. Now we need those headers because we're going to install the DRBD DKMS package. DRBD is the in-kernel component responsible for replicating data between the nodes. We're also installing the DRBD utilities package, and we're also going to be installing the Proxmox plugin during this step. This might take a little while, so we're gonna speed up the video. Now, with all these components installed, you're actually ready to bolt your Proxmox cluster up to an external LinStore cluster. However, in this video, we will be installing LinStore alongside Proxmox on each node. Each node will both function as a member of a Proxmox cluster and a member of a LinStore cluster. Next, we'll be installing the LinStore components. This will consist of the LinStore controller package, the LinStore satellite package, and the LinStore client package. Now, even though we're installing the LinStore controller on all three nodes, we're only going to be enabling it on one node, Proxmox-0 in this case. Before we enable any services, we need to make a few changes to the LinStore satellite service. By copying these lines from our user's guide, we're going to have the service only report that it's ready once it's had a chance to connect to the LinStore controller and enumerate any replicated block devices. Now we're ready to enable and start the LinStore satellite service on all three nodes. Next, we will configure the backing storage for the LinStore satellite nodes. First, we're gonna set up a volume group called LinStore underscore VG on the dev VDB block device. This is basically an extra disk in our test environment here. Now, once this is created, we're gonna create a thin pool on top of this device. And we're gonna grant it 80% of the free space from the dev VDB block device. And notice it's simply called thin pool. At this point, we'll go ahead and switch to a single terminal session. Now we're ready to start and enable the LinStore controller service. Now we're only going to do this on the Proxmox-0 node as the other nodes are simply LinStore satellites. 
Once the service is started, we can begin configuring our LinStore cluster. By running LinStore node list, we can see that we do not have any nodes defined for our cluster. And we can go ahead and add nodes by running the LinStore node create command, followed by the node name and the IP address we're going to be using. And we're going to go ahead and pass a parameter called node type of type combined. This simply lets LinStore know that we may run it as a controller as well as a satellite. We'll go ahead and change the values and add the other nodes as well. You, know, you could do this in a for loop, but since we only have a few nodes, we'll just go ahead and change the values here. If we take another look at our node list, you can see that now we have all three nodes of type combined added to our LinStore cluster. Now we need to go ahead and define our storage in LinStore before we can use it with Proxmox. And we can do that with just a few commands, and you'll notice that we'll reference the thin pool that we created earlier. Now we need to go ahead and create a storage pool on each one of these nodes. And we're gonna do that with the LinStore storage dash pool create command. And this command has a lot of parameters. We're gonna break it down after it finishes here. Okay, now that that's been created, you'll notice we're passing an LVM thin parameter in there, letting LinStore know that we're creating an LVM thin storage pool. Then we're passing the node name and we're calling this storage pool PVE dash storage. And then the last parameter is the volume group and the thin pool that we created earlier in the video. We need to go ahead and also create this storage pool on Proxmox-1 as well as Proxmox-2. Now we have the same storage pool defined on all three nodes. We can view this by running the LinStore storage-pool list command. Here you can see we have a storage pool named PVE-storage on all three nodes using the LVM thin driver type, referencing the volume group and thin pool that we created earlier. Next, we need to define a resource group that functions as a template that gets applied every time Proxmox requests storage from LinStore. You can see from the command above, we've ran linstore resource dash group create, and we've passed in PVE dash RG as the resource group name, and then a storage pool parameter targeting the PVE dash storage storage pool that we created earlier. And then finally, a place count parameter of three. This place count parameter simply means we're going to have a replica of data on each node in the cluster. Now as a rule, Every resource group needs a corresponding volume group created. And we'll go ahead and do that now with the LinStore volume dash group create command. Now to double check some of the commands we just ran, we'll go ahead and run a LinStore resource dash group list command. You can see that we have the default resource group that gets auto created when LinStore is installed. And then we have the PVE dash RG resource group that we just created and we're going to be using to interface with Proxmox. Now we're ready to configure Proxmox to use the LinStore Proxmox plugin. To do this, we actually have to edit slash Etsy slash PVE slash storage dot CFG. This file is replicated by Proxmox to all nodes in the cluster, so we only need to edit it on one node. Now I've already gone ahead and defined my storage for LinStore here. You can see that begins with the DRBD storage type, and I've called it LinStore underscore storage. And for the content, we're only focusing on the images for the virtual machines and the root directories for the containers. And we've referenced our controller with our controller's IP address. And then we've referenced the resource group PVE-RG that we created earlier. After making changes to this file, we'll need to restart a few Proxmox services before we can request storage from LinStore. I'm gonna copy and paste this command in here to restart five Proxmox services. PVE dash cluster, PVE daemon, PVE statd, PVE proxy, and PVE dash HA dash LRM. Now, once this command finishes, that'll force Proxmox 
to re-enumerate the storage in the system and it will recognize the lens store storage that we just configured. Now at this point, we can go to our Proxmox GUI and we can see that all three nodes have the lens store storage added on the side here. Navigating to the storage configuration in the GUI, we can see that the storage we've defined in the storage.cfg file is shown here as well. Everything's good to go, so let's quickly set up a VM, and then we can demonstrate failover as well as making a VM highly available. Now we'll quickly set up an Ubuntu VM using Linstore's storage. We'll call it Ubuntu test. We have some previously downloaded ISO images here. And we'll shrink the disk size down just a little bit. And notice we're selecting the lens store storage that we defined earlier. Up the core count. Memory's fine. Networking's fine. And we'll go ahead and start it after we create it. Now behind the scenes here, it's actually provisioning storage and lens store syncing that storage between all three nodes, and then it's starting our VM. And we'll breeze through this and we'll be back. Okay, we have our VM running and configured, so we'll go ahead and open a shell session. And we can see that we have a hello world text file currently open in VI. Now, if we run our linstore resource list command, we can see that we have an active resource on Proxmox-0 for this VM's disk image. Now we can migrate this virtual machine between nodes almost instantaneously. The replicated disk image simply changes from being primary on one node to another node. And our Hello World session is still running except our VM is now running on Proxmox-1. Coming back to the command line, if we run this command one more time, we can see that Linstore has moved the storage from being primary or in use from Proxmox-0 to Proxmox-1. And for a final demonstration here, we're going to take this virtual machine and we're gonna let Proxmox manage it as a highly available virtual machine. So coming down to the HA configuration in the data center, we can see that we currently don't have any resources defined. So we'll go ahead and select our existing VM. And we'll just leave a quick comment here. Notice our request state is started. We don't need a group. And once we add this here, we'll see a local resource manager start. And Proxmox now recognizes this node as active. Now behind the scenes here, I'm gonna force power off Proxmox-1 to simulate a node failure. Now this next part is gonna be sped up a little bit because it can take a while for the remaining nodes to determine that Proxmox-1 is in fact down and that our Ubuntu VM can be started elsewhere. Okay, our VM has been migrated, and now it's currently starting. The GUI might lag a few seconds behind what's actually happening in the cluster. Now it shows that it's started. We can go ahead and open our shell session here. And we can see that our VM is running. It's booting up right now. Our Ubuntu virtual machine, since we've made it highly available, can now withstand a virtual host failure. To recap this video, we started off with a Proxmox cluster that was installed using the PVE no subscription repository. Then we added the public Limbit repositories for Proxmox. We installed all the software for a functional Linstore cluster. And then we configured Linstore, configured the Linstore Proxmox plugin, and then demoed how live migration and HA operation are now possible. And again, we did this all for free using the free public repositories out there. If you'd like some help, if you want to learn more, if you're interested in enterprise support for your Proxmox cluster, anything like that, feel free to reach out to us. 
Again, our website is jam-packed with tech guides, users' guides, blog posts, etc. There'll be links in the description. And as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.